Now, an animal I did not see myself building for, but one I was just absolutely captivated by. Today, we are actually building for the butterflies in the Grasslands Animal Pack. I was super happy with how their entire area really came out. This is about the same size as the zoo so far. So it was really fun being able to work in a bigger project space, but for one of the smallest animals in the zoo. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright everyone, well welcome! My name is Leaf and it's so great to have you guys back here for Sonora Spring Zoo. Uh, yeah, I really wasn't planning on having the butterflies at first. Uh, I really thought it wasn't too cool of a mechanic until I actually got to see them in motion and started playing with them and experimenting them for a little bit. So I had this idea to have a native garden for monarch butterflies, which are native to the United States. Uh, very endangered population of them too, and I thought they would fit in very well uh, since this zoo is based on the border of America and Mexico, uh, so it really flies within their uh, migratory pattern, um, so I thought that'd be a really fun way to introduce those guys using the null uh, barriers for the actual butterfly house, and I made a butterfly house specifically for non-native species, so exotic ones like the blue morpho, like the... Um, uh, d d d I forget the other ones. <laughs> I think the European peacock is one. But that's essentially what I do over here, and I really wanted this area to feel nice and separate from the zoo. So I really wanted to give it this nice, unique feel, so I kind of centered it within a bowl, if that makes sense. So I manipulate the terrain enough, um, just as a way to help it feel like it's nice and it's quiet, it's like nice, calm, relaxing, exactly how you would want a garden to be. And I took all these garden plants that I kind of determined earlier in the uh, season and I kind of get started with them. So I'm channeling my inner Mike Sheets. I feel like he would kill me if he saw what I was doing over here though. So I really wanted this area to feel very dynamic, have a lot of different plants going on, as well as a whole lot of different kind of ideas lots of different shapes too with the plants i really like what i do with um zizi's custom plants a huge shout out to him uh because he has this wonderful plants of the world set that combines just different aspects of different plants from planet zoo uh and makes new ones out of them so i just think that's fantastic uh, and we also use the normal planet zoo plants so you can see i use the candelabra trees as succulent gardens so those would kind of be like um i'm not sure what kind of succulents they would be i've seen them before um but they would essentially form into that function and i also throw saguaro ta saguaro cactuses back there and a whole bunch of other cactuses uh, cacti, rather. Uh, you can see I'm also starting to develop what enrichment items I want in the butterfly gardens. So I have very little obstructions for the native butterflies, so the monarch butterflies, of course, and the actual indoor ones. I go a little bit more ham with what would be in their habitat. Uh, I really do like our sunflowers over here. I think those turned out really good. Um, just really being able to use these plants uh, is super fun, especially after coming from Wildwoods, which it really didn't have too many foliage kind of aspects to it. I had a lot of fun with the foliage in that park, don't get me wrong, but it's super fun being able to work with a new palette, especially a drier palette like this. So obviously using the organ pipe cacti as well and the prickly pears right there and really forming this area out to be exactly what I want it to be. So I also use a whole bunch of different effects in here. So I use those faux rock walls just as a way to help keep the area feeling a little bit more dynamic and I also use palm trees a lot through here. For being based in SoCal or um, Arizona, really not sure which one it would be in, but I really haven't been using palm trees all that much, so I think I gotta go back and add some throughout the zoo, uh, just in areas where it makes sense, so it really falls in line with, um, you know, the effect that I want to give off with this zoo, but I'm also using the soap tree yuccas, uh, these are really awesome plants, and I'm sinking them into the ground because I would not want them to take up too much vertical space. I want this area to feel nice and flat on the bottom. Uh, I throw a few palm trees in here, but mainly I want it to be relatively low to the ground. Uh, using free build, specifically free build, you can sink the butterfly gardens into the ground 
Um, you need to place it above ground first so it doesn't mess up the terrain. But once you enable free build, you can sink those right in. It comes off so good and it gives a really good effect. Once you breed all your butterflies to have the maximum amount in there, uh, they will all just fly around. It's really magical and it's really awesome to be finally able to have like these animated insects in Planet Zoo. I just think that's super awesome. So I am starting work on the actual butterfly house over here, the tropical butterfly house. Uh, and I'm combining a whole bunch of different aspects that I wanted in here. So I'm using the modern glass panels and I'm also using the aquatic fence posts as a way to create a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a holding structure up there. I'm not really sure what you would actually call that. Uh, supports, I guess you would call that. And it looks really awesome in the end. It gives off a really nice shadowy effect, which is super important, especially when you're working with like shapes like this. So it looks super awesome and I'm super happy with that. It really turned out super good. So on the other side as well, I just always build uh, symmetrical in that regard. And for the actual walkthrough part where I wanted you to actually see the butterflies feeding, nesting, all that stuff, uh, I wanted to kind of work in the faux rocks again. So I'm using the smaller pieces from the things I've kind of made and um, also put down those little butterfly statues. I love those so much. And yeah, that's really it. I get to work on the actual main infrastructure for this butterfly house. Uh, so I wanted something nice and solid to help it stay supported. So I'm using the girders from the New World pack and really helping it feel like it's really nice and really uh, thick on the outside, but nice and thin and delicate on the inside. Just making sure that it feels really, really cohesive with the rest of the zoo, if that makes any sense at all. I'm not even sure if I'm making sense at all anymore. Uh, but duplicating it on the other side, making sure that we're always building symmetrical, just because what you do on one side, you could easily copy to the other side, most in most cases. So that's why I do right over there. And I also get started on this little plaza. So I really wanted to um, have this area feel nice and clean. So I work a lot with the plants and stuff like that, but I keep everything nice and organized and tidy. A lot of the times when you do go to botanical gardens, you will see these plants organized by wherever they're from, what they look like, how they smell usually sometimes. Uh, I've been to a couple botanical gardens this year, actually. Very lucky to have been to a few of those. Uh, but I really do love exploring them because it's always so cool because I always go to zoos and that is very fun, don't get me wrong. But it's always super cool just to get new aspects of how to display things from botanical gardens, from museums. And it's just always fun to implement those in a planet zoo. It's always super, very fun just to... um take one concept from one place and implement it into another. So I don't know, just find inspiration wherever you go. Also adding in the rest of the infrastructure throughout here, again, adding the benches, adding the bins from before, benches by Lion, bins by Christina, really awesome pieces. Uh, and also those signs by Lion as well, and adding in the rest of the plants. What I really loved were using the dragon's blood trees, I think that's what it's called, and the um, quiver trees from the Africa pack. If you sink those into the ground, you get this really awesome succulent looking plant that, you know, it, it just feels like it fits in a zoo like this. So that's what I want to include over there. And of course, using the salt wart, I kind of overdo it with the salt wart, I have to admit, because it's a really easy plant to use. So I use a whole bunch of that and these funky little plants over there too. Uh, really awesome plants, really awesome garden overall. I'm just super satisfied with how well it came out. Again, soap tree yucas make another appearance as well. And of course, the cenote carote, I forget how you even pronounce it anymore. Crisote, I think. Uh, those make an appearance as well. And I also get started on custom curbing. Don't worry, guys. The episode is not all custom curbing, though I do do this all over the park itself. Uh, so we have this look nice and clean overall, but thank God I spared you guys the torture of actually staring at this the entire time because it is just so tedious to do for an area this big, uh, but it helps it come together so much more and you can see it's already done in the background. And I even went a little bit further and made this custom curbing uh, kind of holding area. 
Uh, this would essentially be where you would kind of have like a nice seating area, as well as the entrance to the actual butterfly garden itself. And I thought I'd sneak in one of those signs to just have it feel a lot more cohesive, uh, saying like, oh yeah, zoo entrance that way, butterfly garden this way, rest of the zoo out that way, or something like that. I'm not really sure. But yeah, that's really it. Working with the rest of the custom... Um, uh, curbing as well. A little bit difficult on these steep inclines. I really wasn't too confident with that, so I kind of hide it off with a few plants. Uh, that's usually my go-to, is just hiding stuff with plants. And it still looks good in the end, so you can't really be mad at me. Uh, so I add the rest of the curbing throughout here, just making sure that it's even on both sides, and it looks really good in the end. My only complaint is that this small area over here, it doesn't really have too much going on. The actual gardens look great, but I think I may come back in here and add a few things to that little entrance area just to help it spice up a little bit more. But that's really how I feel about that. And I get to work on the exterior of the habitat as well, just making sure that it feels nice and cohesive within the rest of the zoo itself, making sure that it's telling a story, making sure that like the rest of the area feels like it's supposed to be here, and not just, I plopped this habitat in here, no context whatsoever otherwise. No, I really like making sure that my zoos even in the speed builds, for the most part, even in the cinematics, they feel complete. And that's something I always feel is super important than the build itself. It's just making sure that these areas feel like, you know, they're supposed to be here, that they have purpose. And, you know, beyond the zoo exists a whole other world. So that's something I wanted to take into account right there. And what I also do throughout here is get to work on the interior of our butterfly house. Very simple. I was very inspired by the butterfly house in Arizona. I forget the actual name of it. I think it's like Desert Gardens or something like that. They have a beautiful butterfly house I was super inspired by. I would very much like to do custom paths in here, like taking turns and angles, but unfortunately, it's just not how it's set up. So we're kind of forced to uh, work around that, which I'm not complaining too much about. It was still super fun to be able to include this. And I have to give a huge shout out to my good friend, Bold. She is a wonderful Planet Zoo creator. And she was actually able to hook me up because she was actually building a butterfly house too uh, before the pack was even announced. So that was even funny. Uh, but she actually made this really awesome chrysalis display. So a lot of the times when you do go to like butterfly houses and zoos, you could actually see the pupae actually developing. And yeah, like the caterpillars climb up there. They make their little chrysalises. Uh, and yeah, that's something I thought was super important in here because that's something that you always see in areas like this. So I thought, you know what? I gotta include that. So I asked her if I could actually use that blueprint and she said yes. So we called this area the Bold World of Butterflies, named after her. Big shout out to Bold. Go check her out. She is a fabulous creator. Uh, but doing the rest of this stuff, I really wanted these entrance areas to feel realistic. And I took the liberty of doing the actual signage work on my own because it would be kind of tedious just to watch me pick and choose out letters uh but you guys got to actually see me decorate it so i use this beautiful shade of blue which represents the um uh blue morphos that we have in here uh, but i think i might actually change out the bold to be the color of the monarch butterflies uh, just so that we actually get some good representation of those guys because they'd be the kind of cornerstone of this area because it functions as like a natural garden for these guys and being that it's within their like natural migration area i would love to really put the emphasis on them so that's kind of what i work on over here and i have to give a huge shout out to both christina and a huge shout out to wyatt andrews for the beautiful fonts that i'm actually using in here wyatt andrews has a little bit more of a uh, funky font and Christina made the very modern, very tiny font, which I think work really well together. Uh, just being able to combine those two fonts is a really awesome way to create an interesting kind of logo. And speaking of that, here we are in the actual cinematics. Uh, I really do love the mountains behind there. The South America map is perfect for this zoo. But I want to thank you guys one last time for even stopping by in the first place. You guys are fabulous. If I can ask you so kindly, if you did enjoy this video, uh, may you please consider leaving a like, maybe a, even a comment down below. It always goes to show your support for the channel. Look at the butterfly, it's kind of um, 
making their way throughout there. That's really cool. Again, really was able to achieve that cool look with free build. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the cinematics, and I'll check you guys out in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye bye now.